Ciao amici and welcome to my home kitchen. Today what I'm going to be showing you is my favorite pizza sauce recipe. The two different varieties of sauce that I'm going to make are really um, my personal preference when I make pizzas. I'm going to show you two different ways to make it so that you can make one of these your personal favorite. This particular container is uh, 20, a little over 24 ounces. These tomatoes are pureed and then they added in some coarsely chopped diced tomatoes. They're not really diced perfectly. There are more irregular chunks inside over here. I love this sauce for things like uh, my pan pizzas, um, my grandma style, like the one that's pushed very thin into a rectangular pan, or even my deep dish pizzas or stuffed pizza sauce. I love to use this variety of tomatoes for things like those. The other one that I like to use is whole peeled tomatoes. These are called pelati. I'm gonna pour all of these pelati into a bowl. Now inside of the pilati, we sometimes get a lot of juice inside over here. And if I was to break this open, you can see how much juice actually comes out from inside. I don't want to add a lot of water into my sauce because there already is the perfect consistency inside of this puree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of open these out, let some of that juice fall out. I'm just squeezing this just a little bit. And then I'm taking this tomato and just sticking them inside an extra side bowl here. I'm going to finish my sauce inside over here. And there's enough puree inside of the, uh, the container that I don't have to worry about it. But if I was to keep all of this tomato juice inside over here, it would give us a much thinner sauce. And uh, for myself, I just prefer to use this method. And then I'm just going to break them up by hand here. We're going to end up crushing these by hand anyway, so you don't have to make this perfect. The reason there's so much juice inside of these tomatoes is because these were picked at the prime point of their harvest or the season. So if your tomatoes were still green on the outside, you wouldn't have as much juice inside of these tomatoes. Um, these particular ones are from a brand called Muti. Muti is a, a tomato that comes from Parma, Italy, and a little bit different variety. This is the, uh, the plum tomato or Roma tomato you hear this most commonly referred to, and uh, much different than the tomato that we get down south in Italy uh, from the area of Campania, which is the San Marzano. The San Marzano, again, is a different variety of these, which they also do come in the Pilati form. Now that I've gone through all of my tomatoes, I'm just going to simply take the remainder of that beautiful red puree that was inside the can and I'm going to add this back inside of the tomatoes. This very smooth sauce would be called passata. Passata is again tomato puree and a lot of different tomato companies sell their tomatoes in this form already. Both of these tomatoes are the same variety of tomato, the Roma tomatoes from Parma, Italy. I'm going to get inside here with my hand. I'm just going to take this and kind of squeeze it through my fingers. As I squeeze through my fingers, some of the maybe stringy bits will be left over. And this part sometimes is a little bit tough and I don't like to have these in here. This is why I like to do this step myself. I'm going to discard this piece here. Whatever's left that came through my fingers, the part that's the uh, seeds and all that, that doesn't bother me. I'm going to take a tomato like this, I'm going to press it through my fingers, and I'll be able to feel that if you keep this close to the bowl, you won't have tomato juice all over your t-shirt or your apron, whatever it is. I'm going to go through just like this and continue squeezing, and I can feel again those stringy bits that are left over. This is not pulp, this is physically the inside of the tomato. This might be referred to sometimes as the way that we prepare our pizza sauce to make a Neapolitan pizza. The Neapolitan pizza sauce usually is always crushed by hand. We would never puree these with a blender or anything like that because what's going to happen is as you put these beautiful red tomatoes into a blender, it's going to incorporate a lot of air into that sauce and then all of a sudden you're going to go from having this really bright red sauce 
to something that looks a little bit more orange and that's definitely not what we want. If you don't want to use your fingers or you say, hey, this is a lot of work to be doing uh, on my own, um, you can also search out for what's called a food mill. My grandma used a food mill for everything, including making things like mashed potatoes and um, pureeing carrots and things like that that she would be cooking using uh, as ingredients in her kitchen. We could use a food mill which has a disc with lots of little holes through the bottom and then it hand cranks and all the pulp and tomatoes would pass through until finally we've got something of this beautiful consistency. And this is exactly what I'm looking for. My sauce recipe is so simple and we're gonna season these in the same exact method at the same time. I'm gonna start out with fine sea salt. Try to find yourself fine sea salt. Sea salt comes from water and it likes to go back into water. So by putting this sea salt directly into our tomatoes, it's gonna dissolve really well. I'm gonna use one teaspoon of sea salt. This is gonna be about seven grams, somewhere about there. To me, we could put as much olive oil, as much garlic, as much uh, basil as we want, but the critical one is the salt because we don't want this too salty, but this is one of those that you're gonna make your own. I've got an even teaspoon here of each. I'm gonna take a little sea salt, kind of knock it on the edge so that it's even, I'm not packing it in, and I'm gonna put the sea salt in just like this. The next ingredient that I'm gonna do is my olive oil. I'm using extra virgin olive oil, and the extra virgin olive oil is gonna be one tablespoon. And I put this into my sauce because it helps me when we put the sauce on top of the pizza and it bakes, I feel like it spreads a little bit smoother and it kind of acts as a little bit of a lubricant, if you will, when the uh, cheese goes and starts melting on top of it. The next one that I've got is garlic. The garlic is one of those that, again, you got a lot of different sizes of garlic. These all came off the same clove, and you can see that one is much bigger than the other. So depending on how much garlic you like, there's a couple little tricks that I'm going to give you here, okay? The first one, when I put garlic in the sauce, I'm going to take a whole clove of garlic just like this, and then I'm going to use the back of my palm. I'm going to give this a crack, and what that's going to do is it's going to open the garlic up, and all the essential oil that's in here, it's gonna give it a chance to kind of spread through the sauce. I'm gonna take one clove of garlic just like this and I'm gonna drop it in the tomato, all right? The other one that I like to use is this is a really giant clove of garlic. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut this in half because this is probably about the size of two uh, garlic cloves. I'm gonna cut this in half and the reason why I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna show you another thing that we see. In the middle of this, you can see that it started to sprout the new garlic or the shoot of the garlic out, okay? This doesn't mean that the garlic is bad, but we always wanna make sure that we take that bit out of here because that bit of the garlic is maybe a little bit more bitter. I'm just gonna find the top of it and I'm gonna pull it out. In Italian, we call this l'anima. L'anima means the soul. This would be the soul of the garlic. If you have any trouble pulling out with your finger, just take the tip of your knife just like this and you'll be able to kind of find it and then this will come out as one piece. This connects all the way to the root where this was into the ground. So all I'm gonna do is just literally pull this all the way back and then all of that is out of the, the garlic. I'm gonna discard this. Now, my grandma used a method that I really love and I still use this to the de today. If you're gonna make this sauce the same day that you're gonna use this, I would tell you go ahead and chop this garlic. If you're sensitive to the flavor of garlic and you just want a small kiss of that flavor of the garlic, drop your garlic in uh, the sauce on the morning that you're ready to use this. I like to let this sit in the refrigerator overnight. My dough that I always make is always gonna be sitting in the refrigerator overnight. So I can do most of my heavy uh, prep work on the same day. Make your dough, make your sauce, put everything away in the refrigerator. Then on the next day, come back and you're ready to build your pizzas. What I'm gonna do is, my grandma would take just a paring knife like this, and then I'm gonna make these just little tiny slits through the garlic here. If you don't feel comfortable using a paring knife, I have this paring knife in my hand where I'm kind of gripping it, and then on my 
uh, on the blade, I can control the cut with my thumb. I'm gonna bring this around and do it down the middle. I'm just gonna keep making these small little slices, okay? If you're not comfortable using this, go ahead and put this on your cutting board. I'm just gonna make these little slits all the way down. Once I have the slits made, I'm gonna turn these sideways and I'm gonna make these little slits the opposite way. If you wanna chop these even smaller or finer, go ahead and do that as well. And this is about the equivalent of one clove of garlic. I'm gonna go ahead and just pour this inside of my sauce. The chopped garlic is always gonna give us a heavier garlic flavor. If you love garlic, this is this, the way that I suggest that you do it. If you want a more balanced garlic flavor, go ahead and crack the garlic with the back of your hand and drop it in the sauce like this. The last bit that we have to do is our basil. And to me, this is my favorite part of my pizza sauce. A lot of people don't do the basil or dry herbs or anything in the sauce up front. A lot of times people will choose to add dry herbs and basil directly onto the pizza that they're making because overnight those ingredients, those herbs will get even more powerful. They'll start to bloom inside the sauce just as we did the garlic. If you're one of those people that doesn't like a really heavy flavored sauce with a lot of those herbs, I would suggest to you stop at this point and maybe even don't even do the garlic step at all. Just do the sea salt and the extra virgin olive oil and we're gonna be really good. I will tell you, however, though, I do love to put the, uh, the basil. This is basil right out of my garden. I've got three beautiful, just regular, about the same size leaves of basil. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take three leaves smash them with my hand and what that's going to do is it's going to bruise this basil and just like the essential oil from inside of the garlic as soon as i open my hand i've got that beautiful fresh aroma from the basil it reminds me of summertime in the garden right and then i'm just going to take this and kind of just hand tear these just like this into the sauce we don't have to chop them up i actually prefer not to chop them up i like to use this hand method of tearing because more of that flavor will come out and the basil leaf will stay nice and green. It won't look black or disintegrated when it's all done. This is all I'm gonna put into my sauce, okay? If you are one of those people that likes to use crushed red pepper, maybe black pepper, maybe dried oregano, or any of those other types of ingredients, I would suggest to you by using those ingredients, use a tablespoon, use some way of measuring those ingredients out so that you can track and verify what you did each time and you'll have the same consistent result each time. Now, the last part, we're just gonna take a spoon and I'm gonna give this a stir. What we're trying to do here is make sure that the olive oil is blended into this sauce we're also going to make sure that that sea salt that we ended up putting in here is going to be dissolved and we're not gonna get somebody biting into their sauce or their pizza and get a big mouthful of salt or a big mouthful of uh, oil, anything like that. You'll be able to tell when this is mixed enough because you won't see any streaks of gold olive oil. You'll see this beautiful shimmer on the outside of the sauce and that's a good sign that your sauce is ready to be put away or used today. I prefer to let this sauce sit for about eight to 12 hours before I use it, up to 24 hours max. Because I have all of the fresh basil and the fresh garlic in here, again, those flavors will continue to intensify and this sauce is very different after 24 hours. I really love to use these containers that have the snapping lid on them. This makes it really easy for storage. My sauce is now all done. These are gonna go into the refrigerator and they're gonna be awesome to use tomorrow. If you have any questions, please go to my website, leospaziri.com. Drop me a question there, or you can go to my social media channels, find me at Ask Chef Leo and ask all the questions that you love. I'd love to see you baking. I'd love to see all your results. So make sure that you tag me in all your photos. 
On behalf of me, Chef Leo Spizzeri, I love that the fact that you're watching these videos together with me and I hope to bake with you all very soon. Ciao.